Hello, this is example two for beam calculation problems. So you'll notice what's different in this example is that we have a slanted force acting right here. So we're still going to label the pin A and the roller B. And I need to draw a free body diagram, but before I do, I'm going to realize that whenever I see my three steps for solving these problems are the sum of the forces in x equals zero, the sum of the forces in y equals zero, and the sum of the moments equals zero. And so since we're interested in x and y, I can see x and y directions here, but this is neither x nor y. It is a combination of x and y. So the first thing I'm going to realize is there is an x component here, and there is a y component here. And so those are the two forces that I want to draw on my free body diagram. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to move this down a little bit and I'm going to calculate this x component and this y component. The magnitude of this force is a thousand. So when I have 60 degrees and I'm looking for x then that's the adjacent side, and I know the hypotenuse, so adjacent and hypotenuse is cosine. So the cosine of 60 degrees equals um, adjacent x over 1,000, which is the hypotenuse. So if I solve this, I get x equals 1,000 cosine of 60. So my x equals, and please when you're doing these, be sure that your calculator is in degree mode because if it's left in radian mode from pre-calculus or just from being turned on and it came that way, then um, it's going to give you an incorrect answer. So this is 500. And then we're going to solve for the y component, which is opposite 60, and I have a hypotenuse. So opposite and hypotenuse is sine. Opposite is y, and the hypotenuse is still 1,000. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 1,000, and I get y equals 1,000 times the sine of 60 degrees. And so I get y equals 866.03. So one extra step when you see those slanted um, vectors there. You have to have your forces acting at an angle. You have to break everything down. We're interested in x and y. And so that's where I started. So now I'm going to draw my free body diagram. There's my pin. There's my roller. I'm still going to label my pin A, and I'm going to do a better job this time, and my roller B. And then I'm going to put my forces on here. I'm going to have a reaction force at A in the Y direction and a reaction force at A in the X direction because it is a pin. For my roller, I'm going to have a reaction force at B in the Y direction only because we're going to allow it to our bridge to expand and contract in the X direction. Then I'm going to put my um, forces on here. I have a 300 pound force acting, or 350 pound force acting four feet away. And then eight feet away, I have these in X and Y. So I have a 500 pound force acting in the X direction and an 866 point zero three pound force acting in the Y direction. There's eight feet there. And then I have 775 feet pounds, um, three feet away, 
and then I have seven feet to be and I obviously did not draw this to scale so you'll have to look at my labels and not the distances So now that we have our free body diagram, we're ready to follow our three-step process. So step number one is the sum of the forces in the x direction have to be zero. So when I look at this, RAX is acting in the x direction, left and right. And now I have this 500 pounds acting in the x-direction and that's all left and right so that has to equal zero so then if I solve for RAX and all this negative means is when I drew my picture I drew the arrow facing towards it and so I have negative 500 pounds, so that means my arrow was drawn the wrong way. It's really going this way. My reaction force is pulling away with 500 pounds of force. So next, step two. We need to show that the sum of the forces in the y direction are equal to zero. So I have RAY, negative 350 pounds, positive 866.03 pounds, negative 775 pounds, running out of space here again, and plus RBY. All that has to equal zero. <coughs> So I'm going to go ahead and combine like terms. So I have negative 350 plus 866.03 and then a negative 775. So my answer is negative 258.97 when I combine all of my numbers. But then I'm noticing that I have two variables, and so I need two equations to solve it. So I'm going to need another equation, and that's where step three comes in. The sum of the moments about my pin, which is at A, have to equal zero. So I'm going to start writing my moments. So I'm going to have 500, negative 500, for our AX and it is how far away from A? It is zero plus R A Y and it is zero away from A plus negative 350 pounds and how far away from A? It is four Now I'm going to check if I'm holding it at the pin here and I'm pushing down with 350 pounds of force, it's going to want to rotate clockwise, which is negative, and my math is working out negative. I want to check that out to make sure that I make the correct calculations or all this work is for nothing. Okay. Now my 866.03 is 12 feet away. I'm going to stop putting my units because, well, I just can't. I shouldn't. I'm running out of space. I'm going to have to write smaller. Um, eight, and if I'm holding the pin here and I'm pushing up with 866 pounds of force, that's going to make it want to rotate counterclockwise, which is positive, and that's how I have it set up. Plus, I'm going to do 500 pounds for this, this X amount right here. But when I look at how far away it is from A, it's not 12 away from A. Remember, we're supposed to be using the perpendicular distance. So if my, if my um, force is horizontal, then perpendicular would be vertical. So the vertical distance from A is zero. Plus 
775 pounds, negative 775 here. I'm just going to have to mess up and write these down here because I'm trying to squish it and it's not working. Negative 775 pounds. And it from A, it is 12 and another 3, it is 15 feet. And if I'm holding it here and I'm pushing down, it's going to want to rotate clockwise, which is negative, and my math is set that way. And I have reaction force B at Y. And it's going vertical, so horizontal distance is 22. And again, if I'm holding it at A and I'm pushing up at RBY, then that would make it want to go counterclockwise, which is positive, and that's how I have it set up. So that all of that has to equal zero. The good news is don't let this thing scare you because I have several zeros in here. So this is zero, this is zero, and this is zero. So I need to do 350 times 4. I get negative 1,400. I need to do 866.03 times 12. 10,392.36. And I need to do 775 times 15. See, this is why mathematicians don't write their units. Scientists get mad at you, you should always write them. But we start running out of room and we get frustrated, so we quit writing them. But I'm trying to be good today. For Miss Hogan's sake. 22 feet R B Y. All of that has to equal zero. So now I'm going to combine my like terms. Oh, and I almost made a mistake here. This is negative 775 times 15. This is a negative. That's why we put these negatives up here so that we don't make that mistake. So I'm going to do negative 1400 plus 10392.36 minus 11625. So I get negative 2632.64 plus 22, oh, look at there, I forgot my units already. We're just going to make a mistake. Negative 2632.64 foot-pounds plus 22 feet RBY. So 22 feet RBY Add this over to the other side. Divide by 22 feet. And yay, we have an answer for RBY. So 2632.64 divided by 22. I get 119.67 pounds. So that goes up here. RBY is this one right here. And so this is 119.67 pounds. And then I can plug that into this equation. to figure out R-A-Y. So when I move that over, I get R-A-Y is equal to 139.3. Oops, 
to move that back over. So there is all of my scratch work. And that's example two. Don't forget when you have these um, forces, let's bring this back down. When you have these forces that are in a diagonal direction, we need to break them down into their X and Y components because we're always looking at the forces in X, the forces in Y, and the moments. Thank you for listening.